Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Today, I am going to dive on in and take a first look at Dungeons & Dragons, a practically complete guide to dragons from Wizards of the Coast. This is written by Susan J. Morris, Lisa Trutkoff Trumbauer, and James Wyatt. This 128-page hardcover arrives in stores on August 22nd. It's going to carry an MSRP of $39.95. All that said, let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got the practically complete guide to dragons. So I do want to start off by pointing out the fine folks over at Wizards of the Coast were kind enough to provide me with this review copy. But neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this coverage with you. These days, it's important that you know that. We're also not going to look at each and every page of this tome, but I do want to give you a very good feel for what's inside the practically complete guide to dragons so let's take a look at the back a treasure trove of draconic details with tips on everything from fighting dragons to riding them this illustrated volume showcases dragons as they appear in the worlds of dungeons and dragons inspiring endless adventures in your imagination the practically complete guide to dragons combines the best content from three classic bestsellers a practical guide to dragons a practical guide to dragon writing, and a practical guide to dragon magic, and adds new lore about the dragons found in the world's greatest role-playing game. So let's dive on in. So my understanding is this is all lore. There is no gaming material in here. There aren't any stat blocks or anything along those lines. So it's inscribed by Sindri Suncatcher, who I think is supposed to be on the cover here. I think that's supposed to be them. I think they're a, a scribe who specializes in dragons. So we get, uh, looks like it's a bit of an introduction from that fictional character to kick off the book. And then we have the anatomy of a dragon. I once asked Matic whether a dragon was just an oversized lizard. Gave me a look that could match a basilisk's gaze. Lizards are a far inferior species, apprentice, he said. They do not live to be hundreds of years old, as a dragon does. They do not have wings, as a dragon does. But most of all, they do not have the sheer power and intelligence of dragon kind. There are other differences, too. Look at the dragon I drew here. So, showing the, the body, the wings... The claws. Pretty cool artwork. Dragon Society and Dragon Layers. I think we actually get a breakdown of different kinds of dragons. Going into a little more detail about them. So we have Dragon Combat. Dragons have a range of incredible natural weapons that they can use to incapacitate their enemies. Breath Weapon, Claws and Bite, Dragon Fear. Dragon defenses. Dragon is naturally equipped with weapons and armor. Its scales are nearly impossible to penetrate. The overlapping scales and strong muscles make the dragon nearly invulnerable. And as far as weaknesses, dragons have very few weaknesses. You might think they're vulnerable to conditions opposite of what they're used to. For example, since a red dragon can't be harmed by fire or heat, maybe it would become weak if exposed to the cold and snow. Maddox says he's pretty sure it doesn't work like that, but it might be worth a try. So we've got dragon magic. Dragons have magic running through their veins. Magic empowers their breath weapons, pools in their layers, and tangles in the treasures of their hordes. Some of them are born with a natural talent for spell casting, but older dragons can also call on special magic in their layers to help them deal with intruders. That's showing us the different types of dragon and what kind of breath weapons they have available to them. Dragon abilities. 
So it's going to give us a breakdown of the different types of dragons. And it looks like they are not the metallic dragons, but rather traumatic dragons. So black. Well, we do have bronze, copper, gold. I guess there are a few of the metallic dragons in here. Brass. Okay, so I misspoke. I haven't taken a look at this book. This is the first time I've taken a peek at it. Now, I will point out that unlike most Dungeons & Dragons releases, I do not have a copy to give away because normally I keep the standard edition and then I do a contest for either the retailer's edition or limited edition, whichever one you want to consider them to be. But that's not the case with this book. It is only this edition. Ah, so here we go. Here's our types of dragons. So we've got the brass, blue, bronze, copper, red, silver, white, gold, black, and green. So there are the chromatic dragons. Discussing them. So they are the red, blue, green, black, and white. So we'll take a look at an example of one of the dragons here. So we've got the black dragon. Black dragons are the most foul-tempered dragons. They're evil, mean, and extremely cunning. Some people call them skull dragons, and I'm sure you can see why. On an adult black dragon, the scales of the face are worn away, leaving thin layers of hide that enhance its skeletal appearance. The only black dragon I ever saw was a bit on the undead side, but I found it mesmerizing to look at all the same. The black dragon's breath weapon is a line of acid, sure to burn through most shields and wither most swords. So maximum height, 16 feet. Maximum weight, 160,000 pounds. Maximum wingspan, 40 feet. Their breath weapon is acid. Oh, favorite foods. Fish, mollusks, other aquatic creatures, some red meat from ground-dwelling animals. Habitat, boggy swamps. The stinkier, the better. Enemy, no natural enemy, but will attack and kill almost everything. And their favorite treasure is coins. So then we get some art, uh, some kind of design features of the black dragon. The black dragon's most distinguishing features are the horns that protrude from the side of its head and wrap toward the front. The tips are very black. These horns make the black dragon easy to identify as it flies overhead. No other dragon has such horns alongside its head. So we get it, the dragon eggs, wormlings, adult dragons, the black dragon's lair, and then we get a side view, a front view, and a profile view of the dragon lair. That's kind of cool. And then in combat, black dragons are sneaky foes. They prefer to hide than ambush their victims. Because they usually live in boggy, swampy areas surrounded by trees, they often hide among the plants or within the swamp itself. The trees, however, prevent the black dragon from being able to fly upward too swiftly. This might be the only advantage you have if you must bring down a black dragon. All right, so it looks like we get five pages, five or six pages devoted to, I think it was six to the black dragon. So then we've got the blue dragon, the green dragon, the red dragon, the iconic red dragon. I think usually when people think of Dungeons and Dragons, and the dragons, the first dragon that normally will pop to mind is the red dragon. Because it has been on the cover of so many Dungeons and Dragons products. So we've got the white dragon. The dragon queen. The brass dragon. So now we have the metallic dragons here. The bronze dragon. 
Bronze dragons love to take on the form of smaller creatures, especially humans. Bronze dragons enjoy humans so much that they often go out of their way to help them. They may save seagoers stuck in a storm or rescue humans from a dangerous foe. In many instances, the bronze dragon transforms itself into a human, so those who are rescued never really know who saved them. So not all dragons are evil in Dungeons and Dragons, of course. They run the gamut of the various different alignments. So we've got the Copper Dragon. But the Copper Dragon loves to play tricks, and it's a natural-born jokester. It might disguise itself as a rock, then spring into action to surprise unwary travelers. Copper Dragons are metallic, so they aren't evil and mean no harm, even though their tricks can seem quite devious. And we got the gold dragon. The gold dragons tend to be lawful good. Of all the metallic dragons, the gold dragon is perhaps the most dedicated to defeating evil. The gold dragon goes about its purpose in a very unassuming way. Although its true dragon form is spectacular, the gold dragon chooses to spend most of its time in human form. Then we've got the Silver Dragon, which is a true friend to all. At least that's what it says right here. Got the Platinum Dragon. Chromatic Dragons have their Dragon Queen. So do the Metallic Dragons have a ruler too? Maybe. But the Platinum Dragon seems to me to be a pretty different sort of being from the scheming evil Dragon Queen. Platinum is one of the most valuable metals, even more precious than gold and silver, and the ruler or creator or ancestor or whatever he is of metallic dragons is said to look like an enormous dragon with platinum scales. Dragons also call him Draco Paladin. He is as devoted to justice, honor, and the cause of good in the world as any metallic dragon. And it looks like we're going to get, oh, there we go, so dragon kind. Fairy dragons. I'm sure we'll probably see cobalt and dragon kin. We've got the Draco Lich, Shadow Dragon. Once again, I am skipping through some pages here. Draconians and uh, the Draconians, depending on which color dragon they descend from. Got a section on riding a dragon. Qualities of a dragon rider. Love and respect other creatures. Be strong of mind. Be able to concentrate. Know how to fall, for you just might take a tumble from the back of a dragon. Have no fear of heights. Your dragon will take you higher than you've ever flown before. This looks to be a, a fairly interesting lore book. Even though it is... Uh, a lot of content that uh, had been previously available in a trio of other releases over the years. For some reason, I think the other guides came out around the time of 4th edition. I might be wrong on that, but I think they were 4th edition era books. So it looks like this is Dragon Magic, possibly. And then we wrap up the book. So there you have it. Dungeons and Dragons, the practically complete guide to dragons from Wizards of the Coast. Once again, this 128 page hardcover arrives in stores on August 22nd, and it will carry an MSRP of $39.95. All right. Thank you very much for tuning on in for this first look at D&D, the practically complete guide to dragons. Of course, I will have a review of the book in the very near future. Once again, it's a lore book. It is not filled with any sort of gaming material whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Also should point out if you have the trio of previous books, I don't know how imperative it is for you to add this to your collection, but still pretty interesting. 
like the artwork quite a bit just by flipping on through. All right, that's it for it this time out. Thank you very much for tuning on in. And of course, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this first look, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more you will not find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching, and until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang.